we're here today to talk about the journey from childhood into adolescence. Joining us is Tony Ritchie. Hi Tony, thanks for coming in. Hi Vaughan, thanks for having me. Let us know a little bit about what you do day to day. Sure, so I've um, been practicing as a psychologist now for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, five of those years were at a local community health centre. Mm -hmm. I worked as a part of the child and adolescent team initially and then the youth health team a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, and for the last five years I've been working in private practice, okay. uh, predominantly with young people and their families. Okay, so when you say young people, you know, what kind of age group are we looking at? Kind of from about five uh, through to 25, that's kind of age range I'd work with most often. Okay. Yeah. Um, in looking at children, and they're always our children, so from about 10 years to about 16, there's a lot of developmental changes. Yeah. What kind of things should we expect to see in our children? Yeah, so I mean, between the ages of 10 and 14 are really um, big times for young people. I mean, it's the time when a lot of kids go through puberty. Um, as we know as well, for lots of different reasons, young people are starting to go through puberty at an earlier age, mm. which is placing a lot of demands on a lot of young people and their families. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but nevertheless, the, the change through going through puberty is massive. It's a big time of change physically and psychologically. Mm -hmm. um, moods can go everywhere. Hormones are raging. Yep. Um, on the one hand, you have an adolescent who's really desperately clinging on to mm. the security and comfort of a family environment. Yep, yep. And at the same time, kind of pushing away from a family and wanting to assimilate more and more with their peers. Um, and find a bit of identity there. Yeah, okay, so you know, anything in that spectrum is very normal. What yeah. kind of things should we be aware of that perhaps are indicators that our children aren't quite coping with the changes? Yeah, so if, um, if a young person's mood is persistently down uh, or low, uh, if they're becoming overly irritable, for a lot of young guys particularly, mm -hmm. um, they might be feeling very, very down and sad, but they express that with anger. Yeah, okay. um, so you might see a lot of anger or just aggression in the home and frustration. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you see those types of things over an extended period of time, mm -hmm. it really is worth getting alongside them and saying, hey, what's going on and, and touching base. Um, so particularly anger with the boys, what about the girls? Yeah, so with the girls, um, often a lot of isolation and withdrawal. Um, they might just withdraw from things that they would otherwise really enjoy doing, mm -hmm. um, spend a lot more time in their room. Um, they might, you know, really connect with one or two key friends but just try and keep everyone else at bay. Um, okay. That can be quite tricky. So what kind of tips might you give parents to remain connected with their teens while also allowing them the space and freedom to develop as individuals? Yeah, I, I think that um, having belonging in the family system is really, really, really important. So having a home where you feel safe, where you feel valued, where you feel loved, uh, where you feel you fit, mm -hmm. I think is a really important thing for young people mm -hmm. because as they branch out into adolescence, they are beginning to look at the question of, you know, who am I? What makes me me? Mm. Um, what am I all about? And if they have a really solid family unit and a foundation, it can really help as they progress then into that adulthood and they discover who they are. Mm. Um, so I think for parents in that space, really working hard at keeping the lines of communication open um, yep. is key yep. and that can be tricky. And it's not always over the dinner table while we're having a lovely quiet organised no. dinner. Um, what kind of periods do you see adolescents particularly branching out in? They're not going to sit down at four o'clock every afternoon well, no, and spill their guts. That's part, part of the challenge is that it's so unpredictable. Yep. Um, ra rarely do adolescents come, as you said, when everything's settled and calm and say, you know, mum and dad, <laughs> I, um, I've got some things I want to go through with you. I just want to discuss it. Have you got a second? <laughs> it just doesn't happen. Yeah. And, and similarly, it, it's very rare that parents can come to a young person yep. and just say, oh, look, honey, we just want to have a chat, come and sit down, and for that young person to openly engage. Um, yep. So a part of what I'd encourage parents to be doing is just simply being available. Yep. So making the space and the time uh, where you are around that mm -hmm. young person, mm -hmm. do deliberately check in periodically mm -hmm. to see if they're okay. Um, but sometimes that can be uh, really reinforced with some traditions. Yep. Um, so it might be that you know every Thursday evening you go to a, you go for a walk with mum or you go for a walk with dad. Yeah, nice. Or if the kids play sport on the weekend, you might after the sport just stop off at the cafe and grab a milkshake together. Yep. And it can just be something that you do periodically um, or, or routinely. Sorry, um, but it just opens up doors, you know. Because as small children, we do little fun things that happen every time. Yeah. Often with them, you know, even your bedtime routine is a way of. Yeah getting them in, but it's getting those routines as they get older and to match their age. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, finding something that they're also interested in. Yeah. And I think, you know, one of the, the complaints I hear from a lot of young people in my practice is they just feel that their parents don't understand um, them or they don't have the time to connect with them. And yep. look, th that can happen even if you're the most understanding um, parent and a fantastic listener. Sometimes yep. they just don't think you've got it. Um, 
but it, it is really important to make that space and time and to be available. Thanks Tony for coming and speaking with us today. Your input has been invaluable. You're welcome, thanks for having me. Thank you. If you would like more information on what Tony and I have been discussing today, please visit our website. Speak with you soon. Thank you.